for uh, Brother John this morning. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Gloria, Gloria, Cristo, Alleluia. As the gentlemen are coming forth, I've already prayed over the, uh, but we're going to pray one more time here. But communion, let me tell you again, you've heard this many times, communion offers Sister uh, Lori, a special opportunity to remember what Jesus did for you, yes. what Jesus did, did for me Praise at the Jesus. time of his passion and his death, and it reflects on the many examples of love and mercy that he showed all throughout the, the gospel and the, and the Bible, praise God, and throughout his life. And, and why do we do this? To remember him. He said, do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. Amen. And we Amen. call this sacraments, we call it communion, we call it the Last Supper. There's many names for it. But it's what Jesus did on the night that he was arrested and taken, taken to be crucified by Lord. Communion, communion involves belief and reflection. Uh, it, 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 I, I tell you what, uh, when I take it, 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 it's something special to me. Because even though we remember the cross, the cross is here to remind us all the time of what he did. He put himself on that cross. And I always say that as each hand, uh, and then when in each hand, one represented unity with, with man and God. He connected God and man back together again. He was the conduit that put God and man back together. Praise God. He restored Eden, so to say. So we walk not in an Eden. When we look around, some people might call this hell itself. It's not hell. Believe me, this is not hell at all. But there is a place called hell. I believe that with all my heart. But I'm also going to tell you this. There's a place called heaven. And what he allows us to do with his grace and his mercy is walk in a little bit of that heaven in the heavenlies right now on this earth. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within every believer itself. So we might be in a foreign country now. We may be called foreigners and aliens right now. But we walk with a new type of step, Sister Sheila. We talk with a new type of talk. We praise him, we honor him, and we believe in his promises, and his promises are yes and amen. So we don't have to be part of this world. The part of the world may be going to, 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 to what in a basket. You already know what I'm going to say there. It may be going, going. It may already be there. But you know what? We don't have to be part of it. So no matter what happens in this dirty, old, filthy, molly grub world, we don't have to partake in it. We don't have to be part of it Amen. because we have been different. We have been called out. We are separated from, from this world, praise God, because you are a child of the living God. You are a son and a daughter of God Almighty, praise God. <coughs> so I get excited because it reminds me when he said it's finished, man, he restored. He restored us, praise God. Amen. And we, we become his sons and daughters through a spiritual birth, not of man, not of flesh, but a spiritual birth by believing and trusting in him. It's not coming up and making a confession of faith. It's making a confession of heart. How many people understand that? Amen. I can say a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean a whole lot if it's not coming from the heart right. itself. Right. It's got to come from the heart. Right. When we right. submit to him and make him Lord and God of our life. Someone said the other day, you know, we, we, we say, yes, I, I, you know, I, I love Jesus and, 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 and I submit to him and all that. But are we making him Lord of our life? Lord means he controls everything. Right. Lord means he owns us, praise God. Have we surrendered totally under his care? Have we surrendered totally under his guidance? Have we surrendered totally under his will, praise God? And I pray that we've done that. And if we are not doing it exactly, we, we need to work on it a lot more. I know this old man needs to work on it more and more. Lord, let your will be done, not mine. Let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done, Lord. Continue to guide me and guide my brothers and sisters so we become more like you, praise God. <laughs> Thank you, sweet Jesus. So the communion is to remember, to remember what he's done for us. Let me read from 1 Corinthians 11.23. You don't have to turn there. I'll just read the Bible. And this is what Paul spoke of to the listeners at that time in Corinth about the Last Supper. Paul, as you know, was not Paul at that time. He would have been Saul. He was not a Christian. He was a persecutor and prosecutor of the Christians. He would have them arrested. But on the way to Damascus, on the way down the road, God touched him. Touched him and changed his life forever. He became not Saul the discourager, but Paul the encourager. He wrote two-thirds of our New Testament. Even though he was not at the last, last Supper, 
He knew of the Last Supper. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost taught him. Our Lord Jesus Christ taught him for a number of years, taught him. But it was amazing how when he lined up with the other apostles years later, everything just fit like a glove. Because you know what? We all have the same daddy, don't we? That's right. We all have the same heavenly father, praise God. Here's what he says. <coughs> and when Jesus had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this ye as often as ye will. Drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. I'm going to have Brother Don pass out the wine, which is actually grape juice, and I'll have Brother Gary pass out the bread. Don't consume it. We'll do it all together. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy extend, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Gloria y alabanza a tu nombre, Señor. Te adoro, Jesús. Te doy gracia, Maestro Santo. Bendito y alabado sea tu nombre, Señor. Por este sacrificio, Señor, te damos gracias. Alabado sea tu nombre para siempre, Señor. Santo eres mi Señor. Gloria, 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 gloria. Gloria y alabanza a tu nombre, Santo eres mi Dios. Alabanza, alabanza a ti, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, gracias, Padre. Gracias, Jesús. Gracias. Gracias, Gloria y alabanza a tu nombre. Gloria y alabanza a ti. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just give him praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for every strike that you took. Gracias, Father. I thank you, Lord, for every thorn that was placed in your body, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every drop of blood that was shed for you. <coughs> Going back to the scriptures, he said, when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take. Eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This is the cup in the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you will. Drink it in remembrance of me. Let's just give him praise and glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We honor you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, precious Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Calvary. I thank you, Lord, for you. I thank you, Lord, for coming as a little baby 2,000 years ago to grow up, to be a man. And God Almighty, to die on the cross for me, Lord God. And die on the cross for my brothers and sisters. Oh God. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for a brand new life. I thank you, Lord, for giving me new life. I thank you, Lord, for taking away the old hand and giving me a new spirit, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for your presence being in my life, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that as I look upon my brothers and sisters, I see you through them, praise God. I thank you, Lord, that as I see them, through, uh, see you through them, Lord God, I give even more praise, Lord. Lord, you touch everyone's life in here, Lord God. You've lifted us all alive. You've given us strength when we have no strength. You've given us joy when we have no joy. You've given us peace when we have no peace, Lord God. And Lord God, Lord God, when we lack anything, Lord, you're always there to supply our needs, Lord God. Lord, we praise you, Lord. We honor you. And Lord, my prayer to this and today to the church and to all those that are listening, if they don't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, I pray that their heart be straight. I pray that come to, to know you as Lord and Savior and cry out for you and submit to you and make you Lord of their lives, Lord God. Lord God, your holy word says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Something that never existed before. Old things have passed away. All things become brand new, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for the newness of life. I thank you, Lord, for new beginnings every day, Lord God. 
I thank you, Lord, for a brand new year, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for every day is a new beginning with you. Every day is a new opportunity with you, Lord. Every day, Lord, is an opportunity to be your child, Lord. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. In your mighty name, Jesus.
John was a gospel of the Bible. 
And before I got into the Word, and before the Word got into me, I would use this to go to sleep. So as I was going to church, I would start to open up my Bible at night before I got saved, and I would read a, a verse here or there, Sister Sheila, and before I knew it, I was setting it down or falling asleep with it on my chest. This was a sleeping pill. Because I wasn't allowing the Word to get into me. It wasn't that I spent hours into the Word of God. I spent two, three minutes and go to sleep. But once I received Jesus in my heart and submitted and surrendered to Him, this became alive. This is just a bunch of paper that used to be wood. And through processing, they turned it into paper and put some print on it, black, red print, sometimes other color print. So the words were nothing until you receive him. Once you receive him, these words become alive. Amen. It's no longer just a book with a bunch of print on it. It's a book that is alive. It's spirit and it's truth, praise Amen. God. Amen. That's what the word calls us. It gives us instruction. It reproves and rebukes us. It gives us instruction on how to live. And it talks about the promises of God and what we already have and what's in store for us, praise God. This morning, I was going to allow someone else to, to minister, and it didn't work out that way. And uh, everybody worries when I get a little bit of a cold or something. I don't worry about it because I don't keep them too long, thank God. Amen. And as I said, I'm already healed. I'm just trying to fight off the manifestation of that cold that's trying to present itself upon me. Amen. But today, I want us to turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. Luke now, I don't really have to ask this because it applies to each and every one of us, but have you ever had somebody do you wrong? Yep. Maybe talk about you? Yeah. Maybe cheat you out of money? Yeah. Out of your tools? Out of your possession? Nope. Somebody that has really, really downgraded you? Yeah. Somebody that's hurt you in all different forms of manner. Sometimes it can be not just a stranger. You know, we can put up with a stranger. It's, it's when it's our, our, our own family. Could be a son, could be a daughter, could be a cousin, could be a sister, could be a brother, could even be your parent. But someone has hurt you, even a brother and sister in Christ. Amen. Sometimes you can get hurt, and we hold on to that hurt, and we don't let that hurt go whatsoever. Go. Well, we already know what the Bible tells us to do. Let it go. Let it go. And normally we read out of the 18th chapter of Matthew when it comes to giving your brother and sister, but today we're going to read out of the 17th chapter of Luke. And chapter 17, starting with verse 1, says this. Then he and his disciples, or said he and his disciples, is, it is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto you through whom they come. In other words, you're going to have problems. You're going to have offenses. Everybody that's a Christian today is going to be offended. Oh, yes. Very much so. I remember watching movies when I was a young boy back from the late 60s and early 70s. They were made about the second coming of Christ and about Christians and, and how the people of that time called them haters. They said the Christians were haters. I said, well, that's weird to call Christians haters. Haters, and I wasn't a Christian at the time, Christians love everybody. But because of them not condoning a certain lifestyle, the world was calling them haters. Well, when I met my Lord and Savior 27 years ago, it was still the 90s, and we weren't called haters. People still looked up to the church. People still looked up to Christians. But more so, Brother Gary, today than it's ever been before, the world itself, the government, the world comes against the Christian faith. Yes. Guess what they're calling us, like the movies, predestined, haters. Because we don't condone certain lifestyles. We don't condone lifestyles of men and women living together. We don't condone lifestyles of, of homosexuality. I have people that are doing that in my family now, both areas. That doesn't mean we hate them, we love them. Right. We love them. But it's just a different type of sin. And just because I don't put up with someone's drug abuse or their drinking doesn't mean I hate them. Right. I don't put up with their action. There's a big difference there. So we're not haters. We care about them. 
We want them to see a place called heaven one day, not a place called hell. Amen. We want a soul saved, like the prodigal son, to come back home to Amen. a father, Lord. not one that's going to be lost Amen. in the pig pen. Amen. So we are going to be called names. We're going to be pointed to. We're going to be offended. But how many people know we're not to offend them? Right. Even though we do sometimes, they'll feel offended with our actions and beliefs. It says, it is better... For him, that a millstone were hanging around his neck and cast in the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. Now, we're not talking about the world. We're talking about a brother in Christ. We're talking about a church member. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Now, rebuke seems like a hard word. Rebuke doesn't mean getting in somebody's face and say, Anita, you, you, you got me upset. You bothered me. You offended me. A rebuke can mean a gentleness to come and say, Hey, I need to talk to you about something. I was really hurt with what you said. I was really hurt with what you did. And it really hurt me inside. If you come up with the proper attitude, people hopefully will listen to you. And it says, And if you repent, forgive him. Look at what it says in 4. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day. Now notice it says a day. It doesn't say a week or a month or a year. Seven times a day. <coughs> and seven times in a day turn again unto you, saying, I repent. Thou shalt forgive me. Thou shalt forgive him. And listen to what it says here in 5. And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Lord, how can we do this? If this guy keeps doing the same thing over and over and over, or this, this person is taking advantage of me over and over and over, and they're coming to me and saying, I'm sorry, forgive me, I'm sorry, and forgive me. You know, uh, enough is enough. They don't really don't mean it. But the Bible tells us to still do what? Forgive them. Forgive him. See, we're not, they have to work out their own salvation with fear That's and trembling. Right. Yeah, yeah. But what right. the Bible tells me to do, I still need to forgive them. Amen. Let's say Sister Lori offends me somehow, and she says, I'm sorry, Pastor. I go, well, you're forgiven. She does it five minutes later. She says, I'm sorry, you're forgiven. She does it seven times. I'm going, huh. my flesh is saying, this girl ain't sorry at all. <coughs> She doesn't have a repentant heart, but the Bible says I still need to do what? Forgive, Forgive her. <coughs> How many times have we gone back in our past, even as a Christian, that we offended our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. How many times has he forgiven us? Amen. And if we're truthful, it's a lot more than seven times. Amen. And guess what? Till the eternity until I go home to be with him. I'm going to do something, not deliberately meaning to, but I will do something to offend him. I do believe he cries and weeps. We were talking about Jesus what the other day in Bible study. I believe he cried. But I still come back. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus, for I sinned against you. But we're still to forgive each other. Lori comes again the eighth time, the ninth time, the tenth time. Man, she's a bad girl. She comes 15 Jeez. times. I'm still to forgive her. Because what God is doing is, 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 is this is what I'm going through. This is the trial I'm going through. Sometimes, <coughs> Lord, change her. Change her so she doesn't do that. It's okay to pray that. But what I need to do is pray for myself to say, change this heart. Right, right, doesn't right. mean I, I'm going to condone what she's doing. doesn't mean I'm going to approve what she's doing. I may not allow it in church or allow it in my home, but, but Lord, help me become stronger. Help me to be able to withstand this attack and this offense, Lord. Help me have a loving heart to forgive. Because you forgave the world, not just one. You forgave the world. And you keep forgiving the world over and over and over again. When he was being nailed to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So the, the apostles are saying, increase our faith. Gary, if he's Jesus, I say, Jesus, increase my faith. If you increase my faith, then I can do that. 
But see, you already have it, and you don't even know you got it. I keep saying that, don't I, all the time in a lot of sermons. You don't even know what you got. We have all spiritual blessings that's already given to us. That's Ephesians 1.3. In the second chapter of Ephesians, it says, we're already sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus in the spiritual realm right now. We already have it. And if you are a Christian, you have the fruit of the Spirit, guess what? You have a, we have the Spirit of what? Love. And if I love enough, I can forgive enough. Does that make sense? Amen. So we already have it. When we say, I can't love enough, I can't forgive this person, we're calling God a liar. I'm going to be just point blank. We're calling God a liar. Because the Bible <coughs> tells me I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The Bible tells me in, 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 in the fifth chapter of Galatians, uh, chapter 5, I believe it's 22, that, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, you know, long-suffering, and so on. But here, listen to what it, what it says here. The apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. And here's how Jesus came back to them. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, a grain of mustard seed, and that's one of the smallest seeds that there is. You might say unto the sycamore tree, Be thou plucked by the, up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. What he was saying is you already got it. You don't need an increase of faith. Just use what you already have. Just use what you already have. The, Bi the Bible tells us the same spirit that raised God from the dead, and I'll repeat this over and over again, that's uh, Romans 8, 11. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside you. That same spirit that one day when you ran up to the altar and you bowed down, you started to cry out to God for Amen. forgiveness. That one day, it might have been that maybe in a church house, could have been in your bathroom or in the bedroom, wherever it was, or in your car. That one day that you cried out and said, Lord, I surrender to you. That same spirit of faith was enough to save you. That same spirit of faith is enough to heal you. That same spirit of faith is enough to deliver you. That same spirit of faith dwells in you right now. We already have it. So if you're offended, guess what? I can forgive. I can forgive you. You can forgive me. That doesn't mean that we approve of the offense. It doesn't mean that we're like the offense. How many times has Jesus shaken his head up there in heaven at us? But he still loves us. How many times have you shaken your head at your children and you still love them? How many times have they said they're sorry and you know that they did not mean they're sorry, but you still love them? My little grandson, I'm not going to tell you which one. Okay, Stephen. <laughs> He'll say, I'm sorry, Papa. I was just pranking you. I'm sorry. And he'll do it again. I'm sorry, Papa. He'll do it again. I'm sorry, Papa, and he'll do it again. I'm sorry, Papa, and he'll do it again. But I still love him. And I pray that one day when he does some of the stuff he does, that he'll really mean it when he says, I'm sorry. We do the same thing with each other. With each other. We do the same thing with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Lord, forgive me. I won't do it again. In the back of your mind, you're going about three weeks from now. Lord, forgive me. I'm not going to do it at all. Maybe next spring. And you're not even thinking that, but there's still that little voice in the back of your head. You know you're going to do it again. You know you're going to do it again. You know you're going to do it again. So we have the faith already inside of us. What we have to do is start claiming it. I have the faith to be able to forgive. I have the power to be, over, to be able to forgive. I may not feel it. I may not sense it. But I already have it. I already have it. Have you ever woken up in the morning. <coughs> and someone just gets you so teed off. You don't even feel that you're saved sometimes. Everybody's kind of nodding. Half nodding. Uh, hope nobody sees me now. Yeah. <laughs> we can't go by how we feel. Right. The Bible says don't go by, uh, by how you feel. 
We don't walk by feelings. We walk by what? Faith. Faith. If I, if I went by how we feel, nobody would talk to me. I'd be hitting everybody in the head with a two by four. <laughs> Listen to what it's saying here today. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall be you. <coughs> but which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he has come into the field, go and sit down to meat. In other words, sit down to dinner. And when not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup. That means I may have supper. And gird thyself and serve him, serve me, till I have eaten and drank, and, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he think that the servant, because he did these things that were commanded him, I trow not. So likewise, when ye have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what which is our duty to do. Basically what it's saying is we, we do and obey because that's what we're supposed to do. God said, if you love me, obey me. Praise God. And it's ironic that we're going to go right into the verses here talking about gratitude and Sister Sawyer and Brother John talked about gratitude having a heart of just thanking God for what he's done for us. Amen. And verse 11 says this, And it came to pass, he went to Jerusalem, and when he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, he entered into a certain village, and there he met ten, ten lepers met him, which stood afar off. <laughs> Brother Gary, we know why they stood afar off. The lepers weren't allowed to get near the people. Very contagious. You think Corona's contagious leprosy was very, very, very contagious. You could say that was the super, super uh, uh, COVID at the time, leprosy. You didn't want to get near him. You didn't get near him. In fact, they didn't wear a mask or they didn't have a sign saying that we have COVID or we're sick or we have leprosy in this case. They would come into town and they would have to cry out, unclean, unclean. And that meant people had to stay away from them. And people that saw them could even point to them and say, unclean, unclean. Stay away from them. It's contagious. Because once you've got it and contracted, you could never go back to society as you know it. Once you've got it and contracted, you could not go back to your family. And leprosy at that time was incurable. It was a death sentence. And the people, their flesh would actually start to rot. And a lot of them would cover their faces and their hands because they would lose maybe part of their fingers or hand or their nose or their ears itself. By the way, leprosy was caused by a combination of virus and bacteria that kind of ate away at the skin of the human body. Sometimes we think of our body rotting off. It didn't really rot off. Our, our bodies would get, just get numb, you know, get numb all over. We could actually end up cutting our fingers off and not even know our finger was cut off. And then the smell, the stench of the healing, or the slightly healing rotten flesh would, would uh, permeate. I read years ago in a study of leprosy that there were three types of leprosy. One was so strong, they said you could put somebody in an air-conditioned car in front of your office building, <laughs> say church in this case, and the smell, the stench would still come through out of the car. That's how bad the smell was. So you could smell most of them a long ways off. And you could never go back. So a lot of the lepers would get together themselves and live in little groups because you couldn't go back home. And then they, they, they're not like able to go buy supplies at a store or own some land or property. They just begged and they got what they could and they kind of ate off the land. And by the kindness of others that might give them something at a far off distance and then they go get it. So this particular day, ten lepers came to Jesus. And how many people know that Jesus wasn't just man, he was God too in the flesh. Amen. So he knew all things. He knew all things. And it said as he entered the village, ten men that were lepers stood afar off. Jesus already knew their hearts. He already knows what they wanted. And they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, here was the next word, Master. They knew who he was. Amen. They knew he was more than just a man. They knew that he was more than that, just this healer. Master, have mercy on us. And we saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. I want you to notice something here. Number one, the reason why they had to go to the priest is the priest saw you and looked you over and you had no 
blemishes, if in this case that you had no sign of the disease anymore, you were allowed to go back into society. And believe me, there were very, very few that went back into society. But I want you to notice what Jesus did not do. He didn't pray for 20 minutes over that disease, did he? Mm -hmm. All he had to do was thank it. It was their faith. Their faith coming to him. Their faith coming to him. Have mercy on us. Jesus, have mercy on us. It's already done. Go and show yourself to the priest. Amen. Sometimes when we have altar calls, we stand up and we shout and kick and scream. And we do that because we get excited. We get filled with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost takes over, you may get slain in the Spirit. And you may speak in tongues. You may jump and shout. That's all good. But you know what? Sometimes it's as simple as a simple little love tap. As your faith be, so be it. As your faith is, so be it. Be healed Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You'd be amazed sometimes when I pray over the telephone or in person. I'm sure it's happened to you all too. If you don't pray for 15 minutes, they don't think something happened. All we have to do is say, be healed in the name of Jesus. That's all it takes. Be healed in the name of Jesus. <coughs> we know that God, Jesus spoke. A number of times, when Lazarus was alive, he spoke to God, but he already knew what was going to take place. But when you read through the Gospels, and you read through the Bible, <coughs> Jesus didn't pray for anyone. Mm -mm. By your faith, you unto you. your faith has made you whole. They came to him expecting to be what? Delivered. Amen. And as they started to go to the priest, they were cleansed. But one of them, Listen to 15. Now, one of them, which he saw, that was healed. Gary Wright came back. Right. Put, your, put our name in it. And with a loud voice, glorified God. Amen. One came back. Oh, thank you, Lord. And here's why. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, for he was a Samaritan. Because he was a Samaritan, he was a half Jew. He couldn't go into the priest to show the priest, look, I'm clean. I'm healed. Amen. He was already healed, too. He was one of the ten that was healed. But because he was healed, he wouldn't have gone to the temple anyhow, but he was going to go back to the real temple. He was going to go back to the high yes. priest. Amen. Amen. He was yes. going to go back to the one and true priest, yes. and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And it said that he was excited, and it doesn't say excited here, but in a loud voice, in a loud voice, Amen. he glorified God. Amen. He came back thanking him, Glory. and he, he went down to his feet worshiping him Glory. itself. Then I tell you what, if I had a death sentence, <laughs> and, and, and someone helped me of a death sentence, Sister Sheila, then I'd be screaming and jumping for joy and thanking them too. But you know what? Right now, us today, at this very moment, we ought to be standing up and thanking him and screaming too because he has delivered us from a death sentence of hell, praise God. He has delivered us out of the darkness, praise God. He's delivered us out of everything, praise God. You know what? Sometimes we, we think more of a natural death than we do a spiritual death, praise God. When this body dies, the spirit continues to live on, praise God. I want to live in a place called heaven with him, don't you, one day? Amen. So that's, we need to be faithful. That's why when we come into church, I'm not just talking about the church house. I'm talking about your home. When you, when you get up out of bed, start thanking him and jumping up and down and screaming, saying, Lord, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for giving me eternal life. attitude of gratitude. He fell down on his face giving thanks. Amen. Give God thanks. Give God praise. Yes, Brother Gary. Give God thanks. Give God praise. Amen. And 17 says, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Jesus knew those nine weren't going to come back. They were doing what they were told to do. They were already healed. Cleansed. He was doing that to be a little sarcastic, if you might want to call it that. Weren't there ten? But only one came back. What if only one or two of us in the church came back to thank him? We should all be coming back. Amen. To thank him. Amen. 18 says, There are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger, which means accept this stranger. Now, this is powerful here. Mm -hmm. There are not found, 
that return to give glory to who? Sarah. So who is Jesus referring to? Wow. Himself. Himself, yeah. Only this one came back to give glory to the high glory. priest. Only this one <coughs> came back to give glory to God. Amen. Jesus Christ. And 19 said, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had, which means has, made thee whole. I believe, Brother Don, that he wasn't just healed. He was already healed. The Bible says they were already healed going down the roads. Except he returned. And when it says whole, there's a big difference there. It means complete. I believe that if he lost part of his fingers, his fingers were back. I believe if he lost part of his nose or his jaw or his lip or his ear, his ear, his jaw, his face was back. He wasn't just healed. How many people know you can, you can be healed of something, but you can be made whole too. There's a big Amen. difference there. Yes. We, we, we might have somebody lose a foot or lose a hand or lose a leg because of, of some type of disease or an accident in itself. To be made whole means you're complete again. Can you imagine this man looking at his hands? His hands are, are healed. But not just healed, but they're complete. I've been made whole again. Because he did one thing that the others did not do. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure they were happy. I'm sure they had attitude in their heart. But how big is your attitude of gratitude? How big is your gratitude today? Is it just a gratitude of saying, thank you, Lord? Or is it a gratitude of humbly going down on your hands and knees and crying out to him and saying, thank you, Lord? Amen. There's a different degree of attitude. We know love. Love can be here, but love can be here, and love can be way up here, too. You know, there's different degrees of how we feel. There's different degrees of gratitude. So if we have an attitude of gratitude, let's cry out. Let the world see it. He wasn't ashamed of who was around. It wasn't just Jesus. There, there were people standing around. His, his 12 disciples was one of the 12, uh, one of the people there, and the, the other people that might have been there. He was made whole. I don't want to just be healed of something. I want to be made whole. Amen. I want to be complete. He filled our spirit. But my, I want my spirit complete. The only way my spirit is going to get complete is to be with him one day. Amen. But you know what? While I'm here on this earth, Sister Mary, you say it all the time, we strive for perfection. While we're here, we can go a little bit closer to him. Say, let me draw a little bit closer. Sheila, I just want to get a little bit more closer to my Jesus. I want to be a little bit more like him, Randy. I want to get a little bit more closer, Don. John the Baptist said, I need to decrease so he can increase. Amen. I need to decrease this flesh yeah. so the spirit can increase. Amen. The more I get out of the flesh, the more it can increase. Then I can walk around boldly. Boldly is the line of Judah himself. Not boldly in an arrogant way. Not boldly in a, in a bragful way. He doesn't like arrogance. He doesn't like bragging. But I can go around and say, you know what? I'm nobody myself. You talk about humble. I have nobody, but I have somebody that's in me. Because we're not in this thing alone anymore. We're not alone anymore. God is within us. Ooh, hallelujah. When you go and you lay down on that gurney and you go in that surgery room, the thing to remember is God's laying there right there with you. Amen. God's already in there with you, sister. He's already in there with you. And you know what? When we're laying in bed and, we're, and we speak in the late evening and sometimes early morning, I know our bodies are hurting, but we have to remember who's in us. God Almighty. Is with us, praise God. God Almighty has given us life this morning. God Almighty has brought us to church today to say, let's have an attitude of gratitude, praise God. We're all grateful in here for Him. Amen. But I want you to have not just a, an attitude here of gratitude, but a, a gratitude of way up here, just praising Him. Because He didn't just make us whole, He gave us a brand new life. That when we leave this body, all we're going to do is change your address from Lorraine, Ohio to Heaven's Gate. The mailman will have to start sending our mail to Heaven. <laughs> right. Change of address slip. And you know what's great? We don't have to put a change of address slip in, do we? Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. And we're going to have everything we want. Someone says, do you really believe that? Yeah, oh, I believe yeah. that. Why? Yeah, because the Bible tells me so. 
The Bible tells me that you are a changed person. I'm a changed person. If I have the spirit of Christ in me, if I have the mind of Christ in me, and if I'm walking by spirit, not by flesh, but by spirit, if Lori does offend me, well, I've been picking you. If Sheila offends me or Randy offends me, I can forgive them. And prayfully, they forgive me. When we look at each other, wow, you're forgiven too. Because sometimes we like to blame each other, don't we? Yeah. It's because of you is why I did. No, it's because of you is why I said it. It's because of you. Blah, 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 blah. What do we just say? Let's just drop it. Let's love one another. Amen. Let's not try to get even. Let's not bury the hatchet in each other's head. Let's not talk about each other. Let's not put each other down. And you know what you ought to do? When someone starts talking bad about your brother or sister, you know what you ought to do? Hey, I don't even want you speaking to the hand. Keep those thoughts to yourself. Keep those Amen. thoughts to yourself. Don't talk about my brother Don. Don't talk about my sister Lori. Don't talk about my sister Sonia. Don't talk about my sister. Don't talk about sister Sheila. Amen. Don't talk about sister Nancy. Glory. Don't talk about brother Mike. Don't talk about brother Gary. Glory. Don't talk about brother Randy. Don't talk about sister Anita. Let's not talk about brother Don. And here's the here's the here's the lie in the church. Here's why I can tell people don't read their Bibles. Well, if it's the truth, why shouldn't it be known? Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. You're absolutely right, brother. Read your Bibles. Because something is truthful does not mean that the world has to know right, about it. Right. I post something on Facebook and said when someone comes to you and they're going through a bad storm. Don't be like a broadcaster and broadcast it all over the world. Let me tell you what poor Jose is going through. It says, be an umbrella and cover him. So I need to cover him. I have to cover him by my prayers and pleading to God for the blood over him. You know, we don't have to tell everybody about someone's problems. That's right. All of us have problems, but the world doesn't need to know about it. <coughs> and we get so upset. When people get into our business, so upset when people hear that you're going through something. But at the same time, that same person is also the one doing the broadcasting about somebody else. Let's not be broadcasters anymore. Let's be an umbrella to cover each other with the grace and mercy of God. Amen. Let's love one another. Let's forgive one another. So the story today, the there's no real title to the message if you want to call it forgive each other and to give glory to God and have an attitude of gratitude. We read that chapter today. Get into what, what it's really telling us and what it's really saying. Just like Jesus wept as we did the other day. Well, if we did this whole chapter, we'd be on in a month or two easily. But let's love one another. As I'm going to tell you what, someone's going to offend you if not at home, at church, if not at church, at the store. Someone's going to offend you when you go to the doctor this week. Someone's going to offend you before the day's over with. How do we handle it? Yeah. And let's have an attitude of gratitude saying, Lord, I thank you for giving me the spirit of forgiveness. Amen. I yes. thank you, Lord, for giving me that. Thank you, Jesus. Because when we don't have grudges, we walk around free, don't we? Amen. But you know what? When you have a bunch of grudges and you're holding a fence to it, it's like taking a chain and pulling a body. And, well, I got a fence against him and a fence against him. And you're pulling all these bodies behind you. See, who's, who's all those bodies you're carrying? Oh, that's Soya there and that's Jose. They offended me, so I'm dragging them with me. That's Gary. He, he's offended me, too. I'm dragging him. There's Sister Mary. I'm dragging her, too. There's Sister Lori. She's way back, but I'm dragging her, too. And we're carrying all this dead weight. And God doesn't want you to carry that weight. Release it. Because you know what? Life is short. When you start holding offenses to somebody, you know what? That disrupts your prayer life. It disrupts your glory to God. It, disrupt, it disrupts your walk through God. You know the worst thing that you can have? And I hear this. I love so and so so much. I had them on a pedestal. They were so good. But then I heard them talking about people. And now they're off that pedestal. God doesn't want anybody on the pedestal anyhow. Right. Mm. 
None of us are perfect. But let's be able to forgive one another. Let's love one another. Let's do what God has called us to do. And let's have a grateful heart. Praise God. Amen.